I know not everybody does, but uh, for those people that do check the website for the links that uh, I make when uh, I reference them within the, the shows, because there is a website, photographydaily.show. <laughs> if, uh, if you just listen to this on your, your app, you, you may not have visited uh, regularly or, or at all. But um, if you are there today or you go there, you'll see that there are some pictures of numbers on fences. And you might be thinking, why on his photo walk this week has he been making pictures of numbers on fences? There is a reason, and I shall tell you very soon. Welcome to the Friday Photo Walk, which, um, well, now we find ourselves in lockdown two. We've been here before, haven't we? Lockdown one came and went. Lockdown two has arrived. It's a bit shorter, but we're allowed to take more than one piece of exercise a day. And so uh, I considered that uh, as long as I walk fairly briskly, the Friday Photo Walks could be included legally as, uh, as part of my exercise, surely. Anyway, welcome along. Your emails... And it's uh, me with my camera. We'll make some pictures and talk about the shows that you've heard during the week and and any feedback that you've got photographically anyway. Welcome to the, the Friday Photo Walk. Photography Daily, the Friday Photo Walk. You know, I'm really not sure that the great British Bobby is actually going to run a speed check on you doing a photo walk. Excuse me, sir. You seem to be a little bit slow for exercise. Double your speed, sonny, and stop taking pictures. Not whilst they're still breaking up illegal raves in the West Country and busting into pub lock-ins. Bigger fish to fry, as they say. Well, it's lockdown too, but we're not as quiet as before. Last time round, you could hear a garden sparrow tweet at 500 yards as the planes had stopped flying, the traffic stopped rolling, and even the school gates were chained closed. But this time, the vapour trails are distinctly there. Four-wheel drive SUV school runs have kept the sparrow tweets from being heard, and it's still possible for the coppers to fry fish, as long as they're collecting it as a takeaway. Can't eat in. It's a show on a Friday where you feed back on what you've heard during the week, share some of your own photo stories even, and we make some pictures as we walk together. The show is supported by our friends at mpb.com, who buy and they sell and they trade used camera kit across Europe and the States. And right now, if you have kit that's collecting dust somewhere, it's time to think about putting it to good use by receiving money for it and putting that camera or lens into the hands of somebody who will use it and love it once more. And every time you sell or buy or trade kit, MPB, well, they'll plant a tree as part of driving the circular economy. Today's walk takes me, well, not far from home, another stipulation of our lockdown rules, so I'm by my favourite stretch of river. Well, canal, actually. The Kennet and Avon Canal. Back to Photo Walk Neil, then, for the first question. First email of the week comes from Harriet Pearson. Thank you, Harriet. Episode 128. I wondered uh, whether we'd be starting the week with with an email about that particular, or these particular episodes, because it stretches really across two this week, 128 and 129. Just a message, Neil, to say the podcast with Darren Zamet lupi the Maltese photographer who covered the story of his daughter's battle with cancer, is one of the closest I've come to tears listening to a podcast. Oh, Harriet. Uh, given that most of my podcast listens are roundtable discussions with very screamy people or fitness experts, this was a type of story I'd, I'd not really reckoned for. I'm not at all sure I would have had the courage to record this kind of story. He's a special photographer and they're a special family. Thank you for sharing and all my love to Rebecca or Bex, as you said in the episode. Thank you very much, uh, Harriet. Yes, episode 128 and 129, empowering my daughter, parts one and two. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I'll concur. I think they were possibly the most moving episodes I've, uh, I've recorded for this podcast series. If you... Uh, if you don't know the story, if you're not aware of the story, it is, as Harriet suggests, the story of a, a father photographing his daughter as she battles uh, cancer in Malta. Now, there's a, an added dynamic to this story, of course, that uh, we are in this lockdown ourselves in England, and during the year, Malta have had their own lockdowns, and for quite a long period of, uh, of their lockdown, it meant that... Um, either mum or dad couldn't be with Rebecca every single day as she went through her various treatments. So obviously that was quite an important part to the story. And uh, the episodes, the the additions, um, they they were about how the the story was made and some photography 
uh, bits, of course, within that, such as uh, Darren talking about using a mirrorless camera and uh, working very quietly. But he, he's a Reuters photographer. He's used to covering some pretty strong photojournalistic stories. So um, I put it to him that this must have been possibly the, the hardest assignment that he'd ever faced. Uh, and I agree with you as, as well. I'm not sure if I'd have had the courage to have made the story with, uh, with quite the dignity that uh, he managed to. I'm, do you know what? I'm sure I would have applied dignity to it, but it would have been a, a very difficult, very difficult story to, to make as a photographer. So uh, I appreciated his time very much indeed. And, uh, of course, all our love to, to Bex as well. And thank you for your email, Harriet. I've never known anyone like that um, I don't see it because she's my daughter um, but I really think she's one of the strongest yeah. people I know she is aware of the effect that this story had on other people I mean the amount of messages which um, she received which I received and I think that's that's a really good thing and it all happened because we published the story um, if you're the sort of person who believes in miracles just you know just look, pray and hope for those because that's probably what we need at this stage. Um, and, you know, that's the kind of uh, the kind of help that we need from people. And, um, yeah, I don't think there's much I can sort of say beyond that. Um, yeah. The Friday photo walk. Here we are in lockdown two. And, uh, well, look, I, I should probably tell you why there's some numbers in the pictures that you'll find on the show page for today's edition. They, they all refer to numbers on fences that uh, are on the Kennerton Avon Canal, which is where I'm walking today. And um, a couple of days ago on the Kage Collective, K-A-G-E, um, if you follow that, then uh, I'm part of a collective there's uh, some exceptionally talented photographers within that collective and uh, and me and uh, <laughs> and then um, yeah they let me in they were feeling particularly charitable that day and i decided to do a story about uh, lockdown the, the idea is that uh, all these photographers take turns in posting stories on that on that collective website my story is to do with lockdown and i've walked along here various times and uh, i collected as I am again today, actually, I'm doing the same walk. I collected the numbers off the fences, which indicate where people are allowed to fish. And uh, I thought, well, look, our, our, uh, our lockdown is 28 days, and, uh, and with, with a sort of, I suppose, nod of the, uh, the head, tip, tip of the hat, what's the expression, to the 28 days later movie. Then, uh, well, we went into to our lockdown a couple of days ago, and we come out 28 days later. It's our, the 28th day is our sort of emergence, although plenty of people are suggesting it's going to be a lot longer than, uh, than the 28 days, possibly up to six weeks. But uh, look, we'll get there when we get there. So, yeah, the, the numbers are on the fences, I thought, well, every single day, I'll do something on the Cargay Collective website that I, that I hadn't actually done at all during lockdown one. And that is to make a picture every single day. So in much the same as those calendars you have at Christmas that have your 1 to 24 and you sort of open the windows each day, I'm doing the same thing on the Cargay Collective website. I'm making a picture every single day and putting it opposite uh, one of the numbers between 1 and 28. So that's, my, that's kind of my, my lockdown project. I've decided I will do one. I didn't do one. First lockdown, I don't think I went near my camera for, oh, I'm sure two months. I just... Uh, Look, I'm not going to say I couldn't face it or, or be quite so melodramatic, but I, I didn't... Do you know what? I didn't feel like it. So I, I didn't make pictures during the, the first lockdown. I intend to this time. They, there won't be a theme. It'll be based on how I feel on the day and what I can photograph. And, of course, how far I'm, I'm walking out because uh, you're know, really not supposed to go that far from, from home. You can go on your exercise. So that's what the numbers on today's photography daily dot show page. That's... That's, uh, I've taken some of the pictures that are on that Cargo Collective feature and I, I've used them today. But, uh, right, another email. This is Terry Price in Tennessee. Hi, Terry. Dear Neil, I hope 
this finds you well. Once again, I, I want to share how much I enjoy photography daily podcasts and especially the Friday photo walks. Thank you, Terry. You're very, very generous. Sometimes I, I grab the gear, camera gear, head out on my in my truck while I listen to the Friday podcast on my way uh, to my own photo walk. It's a perfect way to start a day of image making. I've tried to find any silver linings I can during these times of COVID. One is that I'm shooting around my home and closer to home. I'm discovering that travel is a, a relative term and that I can try and adopt the mindset of a tourist in my own town. Do you know, I really like that expression, a tourist in my own town. Do you know, there's almost a feature in that in itself, Terry. I see things I normally miss or take for granted. I just have to imagine that I'm seeing things for the first time. Then is if by magic I learn that I'm really taking notice of stuff which I've become blinded to by repetition. It's been a time of discovery, both in terms of where I live, but also a discovery of who I am. The Friday photo walks have been the inspiration for that. Well, I'm very pleased they have Terry. I'm attaching a couple of images that I've taken along my driveway on our farm. Best always, Terry in Tennessee. Um, Terry, I will pop those up on the, uh, on the show page today uh, so that uh, other people can see the beautiful countryside around you and you're absolutely right i mean often that story that picture that scene is 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 just it's within us and it's so close to us that you don't need to travel for it i'm possibly saying that to make myself feel better about lockdown as well one from steve ford hi neil loving the shows especially the friday photo walk see do you know when i started doing the friday photo walk i thought i'd do a couple of walks out that would be it so a question, what camera makes have you uh, used starting back at the beginning of your career and what's your favourite piece of gear, be it a lens, a body or, or even a tripod? Thank you from Steve. Um, well look, tri- I'm going to start with tripod. I was gifted a tripod. It must be... Oh, I would say... Where are we now? What year? What year are we in? Where are we? Has lockdown ended? 2020? Oh, surely that year's gone. Goodbye. Yeah, I believe we're still there. So this would have been maybe 16, 17 years ago. I was gifted a Manfrotto tripod. And um, it has travelled around the world with me. And I use it for everything. It's not really a very good video tripod. It's not the most stable thing in the world. It's, It's reasonably lightweight, but I use it for that. I just, I just have used it everywhere I've gone, and I left it. I mean, this is, what, two, three years ago, I left it um, at an event I was working. And a couple of days later, I went to go find it, and I couldn't, I couldn't find it anywhere. I searched the house high and low, looked in cupboards. It just, you know, it was getting so ridiculous. I was practically looking in the engine in the car. Did I put my tripod in the engine compartment? And... Uh, you know how these things are. You, you get really anxious about it and then think, right, I've got to forget about it. And um, it was uh, later that evening, that sort of light bulb moment, I thought, ah, oh, yes, I left it. Left it at that event. I could, I could almost, um, almost uh, visualise where exactly I'd left it. So in, in a mad panic, of course, I, I phoned up the venue and initially they said, no, no, can't see it anywhere. And then the barman, the barman had found it when he was cleaning up. And uh, he'd, he'd put it behind all the glasses or something in the bar area. And, uh, yeah, I, I drove, what was it, 40, 50 miles or whatever <laughs> to go and get my tripod back. But, uh, yeah, love my tripod. So that's a Man, Manfrotto tripod. That answers that one. And then cameras. Right, well... You said career, so I'm not going to go through every single camera I've ever owned. <laughs> that would become extremely laborious. But in terms of my, my career, ones that I've used, cameras that I've used to actually make some, make some folding from the old boy, um, they would be Mamiya 67, I think, um, Nikon, Nikon, Nikon F5. Then it, was, uh, then it went digital uh, with the D100, Nikon D100, D2X. Now, I had, um, I had the sport version as well, the uh, sort of bigger bodied... Was that D, D2... Was that D2F? D, oh, I'm trying to remember now. I'm sure somebody will tell me. Um, but yeah, then, then Canon, Canon 5D. So I, I made the transition. I went on a, I went on a course, actually, and I met uh, Jerry Guinness, the... Um, the Australian, now American, wedding photographer. And uh, one day he put um, 
a 5D in my hand, attached to a the obligatory 70 to 200 zoom, and said, there we go, Neil, go try that out. And he took my Nikon off me, put it in a cupboard, and I went out with his camera, and I loved it. I just felt, I, I mean, I, I really liked my Nikons, but, but as soon as I started using the Canon 5D, it just felt, just felt at home with it. It felt so intuitive, and I really liked the, the wheel on the back. And so, yeah, I made the swap pretty much straight away to 5D, went through all the um, different 5Ds, the 1 to the 2, 3, and the 4, um, and then uh, I made my swap to Fujifilm, stack of X-Pro and X-T bodies, X100, 100S, I think I had the T, uh, and now I've got an X100F, um, and I used the, uh, the X-T3, I haven't made the move to X-T4, probably would have done if it weren't for, weren't for that wretched COVID, but if I would, you asked to choose the, 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 the bits of kit that you've, you've absolutely adored using or the, that um, were fave pieces of gear, I'm going to be controversial uh, in terms of, well, choosing a Canon body. What, Neil? You're a presenter of the Fujicast as well with that Kev Mullins. Don't tell Kev, don't tell him. But I think the camera that uh, made the most... Just one of those, just one of those moments for me was the uh, was the five D two when I swapped one to two. There was something about the color, the low light capability. Um, you know, I'm going to call it bang factor, <laughs> wow factor. That uh, I just I remember the the first shoot that I did with that camera, and I came back and I processed the images, and I thought, wow, I was just I was absolutely I felt in love with that camera hook line and sinker and um it was a game-changing moment it really was it might be a little bit like your first glass of red wine though of you know of course i I, because once you've had that first glass of red wine what do they say it'll never take you'll never have another glass of red wine that tastes as good as your first really good glass of red wine you can yeah it doesn't matter how much money you spend or invest but uh, you'll you'll never have the same experience. Perhaps that's what I, perhaps that's what I feel about that because I, I've used many cameras that I think probably stand up to that five D two and beyond. But uh, yeah, that was uh, that was quite a moment. I couldn't rival that. But thank you, Steve. Thank you for your for your mail. Back to your messages in a moment on the Friday photo walk. Next week on the show on Wednesday, I'll be talking to Edmund Terracopian a photojournalist based in London. We've talked to him before, I know, but he has for the last seven months, which I did not know, uh, he's been working on a photographic fundraising auction for Médecins Sans Frontières. And we'll be talking about the auction, the photographers involved, and some of the stories behind the pictures being auctioned. But here's Edmund, just ahead of that day, to tell you more about it. And I'll include the link he mentions in today's website edition show notes at photographydaily.show. The Eyewitness MSF Charity Photographic Print Auction is open now and continues to be open until Sunday the 15th of November this year and will end at 5 p.m. GMT. You can find details of the auction on bamfords-auctions.co.uk and look in the sales for the Eyewitness MSF Photographic Print Auction. It's a print auction of 66 prints donated by 42 photographers worldwide, including many guest photographers, legends in their fields, as well as members of the Eyewitness Collective. And our aim, and only aim, is to raise as many funds as we can for Medicine Sans Frontier to help with their COVID-19 crisis fund. So please have a look at the project. Please donate if you can, buy a wonderful print, and at least share as widely as you can so we have maximum awareness for this extremely crucial auction project. Thank you. And I'll be talking to Edmund on Wednesday. Right, back to your questions and your messages that you've been sending in. And of course, if you do want to send in your own message to the Friday Photo Wall, which is a very different edition in the week, then send it to studio at photographydaily.show. Studio at photographydaily.show. It's the Friday photo walk. Just you and me and uh, my camera. Still got the X-Pro1, still with a vintage lens on it. Um, Although there are a few X100F pictures to appear today on the the show page. If you go to all the W's, photographydaily.show, 
look up uh, today's episode and uh, I always uh, put a couple of images on that show page that have been made during the photo walk. Um, this one is from John Baisley. Hello, John, a friend of the show, definitely. Podcast 123, Animal Photo Journalism. Why Should I Care? Yeah, that, that was the title. I wondered if that was a bit strong, to be fair. Well, here we go. Stand by. Strap yourselves in for this one, everyone. I found myself angry, quite frankly, and annoyed at yourself, Joanne MacArthur and Keith Wilson, another small group trying to push their thoughts and ideology onto me and make me feel guilty if I don't agree. With you, Neil, giving them a platform to tell their view. A line from a Star Wars movie came to mind when Emperor Palpatine says to Anakin Skywalker, you're either with us or against us, leaving no middle ground for thought or choice. Yes, I can tell you were affected by that episode. Shall I continue? Do I dare? Five minutes into the podcast, I'm being told not to eat animal products. Not by me, John. And that the whole purpose of the book was to invoke shame into our choices of food. Yeah, well, I, I'll agree, yes, shame was a word that was used. Currently in 2020, we're being told to stay indoors, guard our speech, even in jest, in order not to offend and to wear masks ordered by the government with every social interaction. Now I'm being told what to eat. You're not winning any support in this corner. But then I caught myself before falling down the emotive rabbit hole thinking, why am I thinking like this? Then it clicked. This is a brilliant photojournalism book. Hidden, animals in the Anthropocene does what any great photography book should do. It makes us think. Think about the images, what they mean to us, how they make us feel. Think about our choices. Think on what we do, say on purchases that we make. So for that reason, alone, I'm changing my mind. It was a brilliant podcast, interview and photo book. Well done on taking uh, the courage to tell this story. I'm off to order the book now. Goodness, I thought I was in a lot of trouble. And to be fair, if I had been in trouble... I would have taken that one on the chin because it was, you know, it was a couple of episodes where, yeah, I think I did get quite emotively... Well, I was involved with the story. I, I certainly was. I'd seen uh, some of the pictures from the book, although I've only just received my book. And uh, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to... There may well be people that, that feel the way you did, John, without the last bit, as if they'd been preached to about... Um, animal cruelty and what we're allowed to eat I don't think the interview was intended to be that but we certainly talked about that and we certainly certainly heard Joanne in particular get uh, really quite emotional about uh, about what we eat and how we we treat animals Um, so yeah that particular episode if you want to go back it's uh, number one two three and uh, I do have the book I have it at home it's um, when I received it, I put the book straight out. I put it onto um, a countertop, and uh, I waited really for the family to pick it up at some stage, because there are some not gratuitously horrific, but there are some some you know, pretty horrifying scenes in there, and uh, I was I was interested to see what my young family and my wife um, would would say about it. I just sort of left it there. And they, I can tell that they've been looking at it. And the other day, uh, just before we went into to lockdown, my, my good friend Giles Penfound came round and he picked the book up. And uh, now he, I remember talking to him about the episode. He's, a, uh, he's very supportive about uh, the show. And um, he was very honest with me. And my friends gen- genuinely are very honest about the podcast too. And he said, I couldn't listen to that episode. And... Uh, and he, he went back to the episode, he did listen to it, and he picked up the book the other day. And um, he was looking through it, leafing through it. And uh, look, he, he's a book collector. I, I tell you, his, his book collection is very impressive. And uh, he said, look, I'd, I'd not ma- made, and neither was I trying to make a vegan or a vegetarian out of him. I'm not one myself. There we are, hands up. No, I'm, I'm not there myself yet. But, yeah, he, he, I think he's gone off to buy the book now. It's an incredibly potent, powerful documentary about, um, about the animals, the hidden animals, those that we eat, those that we, those, that, um, those that we wear, those that we use for medical science. Um, so, so, yeah, 
But I did wonder, John, if I came across a little bit strong in my opening essay to that show, because it, uh, it does read rather that I'm, I'm engaging in the you're either with us or against us rhetoric. Though I do think I was trying to say, look, you may not like what you're going to hear, but instead of simply switching this show off, um, like the gym guy I referred to within the show, how about you give them your ears and, and hear them out? And I think that's what, that's what this podcast is all about. I don't think you'll agree with everybody that you, that you listen to. And, and as I become more and more story-focused, because that seems to be the direction that we're taking this show, I think you're going to hear a lot of stories that, uh, that may challenge you in, in, in places. And that's good. I think that's what the show's about. But um, thank you. John, thank you for your email. I'm glad in the end uh, you weren't as offended as you, as you initially were. I thought, oh my word, I'm upsetting some of the most precious listeners. But um, you should have your thoughts. And if I sometimes step outside the, the line or over the line or whatever that, that expression is I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find, then tell me, please, because uh, that's what this show's all about. Your feedback to the shows when we take our, our Friday photo walk. I've come out a bit late, actually. I started off with beautiful sunshine and quite sort of contrasty, uh, contrasty light that I could, I could uh, use to try and gather these late autumn, is it early autumn or late autumn, late autumn trees as they change colour. I'm going to have to quicken my step and get a few more before it becomes too dark. The Friday photo walk, just me and my camera and the microphone and you and your emails and your feedback to the shows that you've, uh, you've been listening to. And thank you very much for your support, those who are and members. You're, uh, you're truly, you're all wonderful people, members, um, but thank you in, indeed to the members for, for your support. And uh, certainly thank you for those that have been joining in with the, uh, the November survey as well. We're running that. If you go to the website, photographydaily.show, look, um, look for the word survey in the menu, and that'll take you through to a survey which is going to, uh, I think it's going to help us really decide the, uh, the future direction of the show, um, the frequency of episodes, for example, and, and uh, how many guests on each, on each episode things like that and to find out as, as well what uh, who's listening whether you're a, a hobbyist an amateur a semi-pro or a full-time pro um retired uh, all sorts of questions on there it doesn't take long takes i'm not even sure if it would take five minutes to be honest and there's some amazon vouchers to give away uh, we'll do a draw at the the end of the month so thank you to those that have joined in with that so far i was really really chuffed to um to see the amount coming in and thank you for some of the personal messages because there is a, a space within that to leave some some thoughts on top of of the check boxes um, so uh, i appreciate that too uh, leon lewis a question for your friday photo walk neil with all the different genres of photography out there which one would you love to have a try at is there something that you've always wanted to photograph but never had the chance love the podcast can i say i'm probably one of the first to listen to the daily show because i uh, I have that on as I go for my 5.30 walks in the morning. I'm not quite sure uh, whether you're the first. I don't know. Depends, of course, also with the, the upload time, doesn't it? And uh, Sometimes I'm very good and I get that upload the night before, so it's there first thing in the morning. Sometimes I'm still working on an episode in the morning. And occasionally I've, I've popped it up and then I've gone back to it to think, oh, no, I want to change a bit. I'm trying not to do that so much. But uh, Leon... It's good to know that you're certainly in there as one of the earliest, if not the earliest. Well, um, okay, so different genre, different genre. Uh, well, I've always seen myself as somebody who could, Leon... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> There's a train in the background. Yeah, I've always seen myself as somebody who could and, and would enjoy working on fundraising and awareness campaigns. Uh, that's something I could really sink my my creative teeth into I'd uh, I'd certainly I'd certainly enjoy that I think it's something that um, it's something that inspires me when I see other photographers making those sort of stories people such as I know I've mentioned Darren already Darren Zamet Lupi some some of the the photographs that he's made for Reuters now that I'm more aware of his work and his good friend and a friend of mine uh, Jason Jason Florio 
um, the work that, uh, that he's been making. I'm not sure if you can hear that in the background, but there's a... I'm not making a... Look, shh, I've got to make a photo of that. It's a, a train for my son. Look at that really old train. It's, it's practically the same colour as the, uh, the trees around it. So it's almost like a camouflage train. So, yeah, um, so that's something I could really sink my uh, creativity into. I'm quite sure how I'd go about uh, telling some of those stories. I mean, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of stories on your, on your doorstep if you really wanted to get involved in awareness campaigns. I mean, we've talked about him before, but uh, Jim Mortram, fantastic photographer who's been making stories in uh, Deerham, in uh, Norfolk. Is it Suffolk or Norfolk? I'm sure it's Norfolk, or is it Suffolk? Anyway, he makes these stories um, within a two and a half mile radius of his home. And um, uh, he calls it, uh, the project was called Small Town Inertia. It's just incredibly potent, powerful stuff. Uh, commercial, I suppose commercial portraiture as well. Um, if I was to, to answer your question, Leon, I want to, I want to get, get on with that. Um, I've been photographing events for years and years and years, and um, it's been fantastic as, a, as an income. Um, I, if I were honest with myself, I, I do think it had started to drop a little bit. Even before the, uh, the, the pandemic, I was doing less of it. And uh, so I'd been thinking about commercial work. I, I'm, I'm of an age now, during a war, I'm of an age now where I, I, I feel... Um, look, I'm not suggesting that if you're young, as a commercial photographer, portrait photographer, working with CEOs and that, that, that kind of portrait sitter that you have no credibility, not for one moment. But um, I do think sometimes with age comes uh, a maturity. Let's call it maturity, I prefer that, that uh, description. Comes uh, this ability to communicate in a, in a somewhat different fashion with, uh, with those, those kinds of captains of industry. And I find them fascinating. It's certainly a world outside my own. So that's, that's, that's a genre I'd like to work in. And I guess, actually, celeb work, celeb portraiture, I think that's something I could do. I mean, I, I'm not thrown by meeting famous folk. I'm not, I'm not like a, I don't know, a Jack Russell anymore, you know, lapping around the feet of celebs. <laughs> I want to get your photograph, I want to get your photograph. Um, I, I wouldn't, you know, I'm, I'm not thrown by... By celebs, and that's partly, I suppose, because I I spent so many years interviewing them and, and the BBC. So yeah, that's another form of work I think I'd enjoy. I, I, I might like to have been involved in making stories of, of conflict years ago. I think I would have risen to the challenge, but uh, no way now. Not not with a not with a young family. That's uh, that's not the that's not my uh, that's not something I'd enjoy as much. But uh, Thank you, Leon, for your question. Appreciate it. If you'd like to uh, send a, an email in for the Friday Photo Walk, I'd love to hear from you. Send it to studio at photographydaily.show. Studio at photographydaily.show. Or if you, if you have a chance, go to the website and, um, and then go through the contact form there. There's loads of other stuff on the website. Um, I think you'll enjoy the friends tab which is where people have sent in some stories some photo essays of their own oh bike hiya <laughs> no worries uh, where people have sent in stories of um of things that they've done some photo essays so uh, yeah that's that's the the friends tab and uh hint hint you can always go to the members tab as well if you so wish and become a member and listen to the the last Saturday in the month, Megasode, which uh, this month is uh, two and a quarter hours, two guests. There's um, a ghost story on there as well because we aired that one on Halloween, my haunted studio story. And, uh, yeah, some, some other bits and bobs on there, including my good friend Giles, who we've mentioned already, He's two mentions in this show now, who was uh, doing a book review on the... Uh, well, we started with uh, Henri Cartier-Bresson, there's only one place to start, really, with the decisive moment. And uh, I forgot the other day when he was in. I was thinking we should have done a, we should have done another book review because, of course, he's he's not allowed in during lockdown. So he might be doing a Skype book review for the next uh, mega sode. Not quite sure what we'll choose, but um, 
Two more emails this week. Uh, who should we go for first? Neil Haynes. Neil, I like the spelling of your name. I haven't met many other Neils that are spelled N-E-A-L-E. Went to look at your website as well. It's like a who's who of celebrity culture. Incredible work. Must get you on the show. Just came across your cast. Wanted to say good work. Crack on. It's always interesting listening to other photographers waffle on while editing. It's not often you talk shop. Uh, I find as a photographer. Thank you from Neil. No, thank you, Neil. Do you not talk shop when you go out with other photographers? Blimey, that's good. Do you manage not to talk apertures? Shutter speeds? Latest digital models and mirrorless and mirrorless versus DSLR and all that kind of stuff? Or do you manage to... uh, Or have you got a friendship circle that doesn't involve photography? Anyway, thank you for your email. And uh, yeah, amazing. Well, you know this because you're a... You're a top pro. If you get a chance, I'll do a link actually to his website so you can go and look at Neil Haynes' work. Fantastic. Um, yeah, and last one of this week from Natalie Whitehill. Thank you for your, your mail, Natalie. Let me go and just lean over here and read your email. Just been on a power walk for the last five minutes. And I'm probably heavy breathing at everybody. There we go. This seems as good a place as any. A wee note to say I'm so pleased to have discovered the show. I find the content to be dynamic, very refreshing to hear about uh, both tech, professionalism and art and creativity and just general life. I'm glad you've noticed the uh, the general life and the story side of it because, uh, as I said a moment ago, Natalie, that's really where I'm trying to take the show. Um, stories of life told by photographers. It's made my drives and late night edit sessions much, much more bearable. So some feedback. Um, I'd love the show to better represent the professional photographic community, however, as I notice the guests and abundance of your your guests' male identifying. I appreciate that these professionals are incredibly talented and interesting. I can say so firsthand from listening. I'm also aware that uh, some have worked in times or specific areas and fields where it was not the norm for those other than men to pursue the profession, although that's not the case now. And it hasn't been for a while. I'd like to see a more inclusive approach to your show. Many thanks for your wonderful podcast. Yeah, um, I'll take that one on the chin. Uh, good feedback, Natalie. You're not the first to say this, and uh, I'm not going to offer defence as, as such, by the fact I kind of sort of well, motor on sending my invites out to, to fabulous photographers, and often the, the links come from those I, I speak to who introduce me along their, their professional line and in their professional circles. Um, However, I can promise you this, uh, I'm on the case. Denise Maxwell actually started the the week off this week and uh, she delivered some very interesting thoughts that would uh, certainly support what you're you're saying, Natalie, um, about women in photography and that, that, uh, what was the figure? She said, yeah, only 5% of all major commercial photographic campaigns go to a female photographer. I omitted to actually ask where that... uh, where that figure came from not that i was disputing it but uh it would have been interesting to know where where that uh, where that figure came from so that i could uh, so that i could go to work on on that particular that particular subject but uh, you make a make a very good point and i appreciate your email and uh, i promise i'm on the case and that's it for this week's photo walk my thanks to mpb.com who are the leaders in buying and selling and trading online for use kit go to mpb.com back Monday with Denise Maxwell who refused to let Covid pull her photographic business apart Tuesday Cam Neville the firefighting photographer in Australia Edmund Terracopian with more about that MSF auction and the stories behind the pictures there was some more philosophy about this thing we love call photography on Thursday from Sean Tucker my thanks as always sincerely to all those who support the show through the members area Without you, honestly, this would not be possible. So sincerely, thank you very, very much. Music in the show today was from Artlist.io and I look forward to photographing with you, hearing from you and talking with you on Monday. Photography Daily is a Loading Zone production.